Hi Bull Bakers, today we are making an elegant tiramisu cake for the holidays. I want to say a big thank you to Farmer Direct Foods for sponsoring this video and making it possible for you guys. We are going to start out by making this lovely light and delicate cake. It's one of my favorite cake recipes. So in an ice big bowl I'm going to add in my flowers. Now I'm doing two mixtures of flowers for this recipe and I'll tell you why. You get a lovely flavor from them. So I'm going to use Farmer Direct Foods all-purpose flour. Now I love this for all of my baking. The thing about it is that this flour is milled closer to the bran so it actually has better flavor and it's really nice and fine. I use it for everything. I'm also going to add in a little bit of their heirloom wheat flour. Now I love this flour because it's stone ground to retain nutrients and protein. It also has a lovely wheaty flavor, almost kind of nutty. And if I mix a little bit with this flour, it just gives you a lovely balance and extra flavor. This flour is a healthier choice for your baked goods. Now into the flours, I'm going to add in some baking powder and salt. Give those a little mix together. Okay, lovely dry ingredients. Now let's start to whip up our eggs. So I've separated my eggs here. Here I have my egg yolks. Room temperature because they whip up so much better. We have reserved the whites to whip up after. And into the eggs, we are going to add in our sugar. And at this point, we're going to add in vanilla extract. Yummy, yummy. Now, crank that machine up to a high speed. Let those eggs get really lovely and light and fluffy. It's gonna take a few minutes. I really love the idea of this cake, and especially for the holidays or for New Year's. It has all the elements that I love about tiramisu. It has mascarpone, it has a lovely light kind of spongy cake, it has coffee, it's got a little bit of booze in there, cocoa powder on top. I mean, everything that I absolutely adore in one mouthful. Look how lovely and whippy that is. Beautiful. Now I'm going to add this egg yolk mixture into our flour. Scrape out that bowl really well. Nothing left behind. Give it a quick rinse and get it ready for our egg whites. So into your flour mixture, just mix in the yolks. You can see it's a little bit dry because we do need a little bit more liquid and that's what our milk is for. Mix that in there to loosen up the mixture, just like that. And then here I have some melted butter. Lovely. Just gently mix those ingredients together. We don't want to over mix because we have flour in there. We want to keep it nice and light. Now this only has to sit for a minute because we're going to whip up our egg whites now and that doesn't take long. And then we're going to fold those into this mix. Okay, so into my clean bowl, room temperature egg whites that we separated from earlier. Whip them up for a few minutes until they reach soft peaks. High speed. So once they reach soft peaks like this, you can slowly start to add in your sugar. You don't want to add it in too early or the sugar will just go straight to the bottom of the bowl and it won't get whipped in. You do have to make sure that the egg whites are nice and thick before you start to stream it in. So little by little, slowly add in your sugar. I know this style of cake seems a little bit more involved and a little bit different, and it is, but it's not complicated. It just takes a few more steps. The result that you get is this lovely light as air, almost like angel food cake cake, which is just so lovely and works really well for this like recipe. Once your sugar is all in, it will look like this. Lovely, stiff and peaky, which is what we call stiff peaks. Okay, into our bowl. Take around a third of those lovely egg whites. Now, not a spatula here, a thin edged metal spoon because this is what we're going to do. We're going to loosen up this mixture and introduce a little bit of egg white. Fold it in just like that. When it's mostly folded in, go ahead, add in the rest of your egg whites. Now, the reason you use a thin edge spoon and not a spatula is because spatulas are thick and they'll knock out all that lovely air that you created. So for a technique like this, when you're making a Genoise sponge or something like that, you use a thin edged metal spoon so it slices through your mixture and it doesn't like just like cut with a big thick spatula. You want to just glide right through there and preserve those lovely bubbles that we worked so hard to create with the egg yolks and the egg whites. Look at that, beautiful. So gently fold, you know the rule about folding, go around the bowl, cut down the middle. I sound like a home economics teacher, around the bowl and down the middle. Well, that's kind of what they sound like in Ireland. It just, it, it really does make a difference and it preserves that air. So just keep on folding in the egg whites until they're almost gone. OK, 
careful not to over mix. I'm using two eight inch cake pans. You can do six inch cake pans. You can do three of them. You can do nine inch, whatever you like. And just divvy it up as best you can evenly between the two tins. Make sure to butter and line these well because we don't want our cake to stick into the pan because that would be very upsetting. Mm, I can almost smell the flour. You know, I can smell the kind of the wheaty nuttiness that you get from whole wheat. And it's one of the reasons why I like to introduce a little bit in there. Gently flatten out your cake. Gorgeous. Now my oven is already preheated to 350 degrees Fahrenheit, 180 degrees Celsius. So let's get them in there. So the reason that I partnered with Farmer Direct Foods this holiday season is because I love their product. Their flour is just better for you. It is 100% stone ground, it is 100% whole wheat, and it's minimally processed, which means that the flavor is better and nutrition is better. It's also better for the farmers. Their farmers deliver a premium product, so they deliver premium pay and reinvest back into American farms. Lastly, it's just better for the earth. It is regeneratively farmed, which improves soil health, which actually reduces carbon emissions and conserves water which I am all about. Now while our cake is in the oven let's take this opportunity to make our mascarpone buttercream frosting which is just super delicious and will work well on any cake, cupcake or the back of a spoon. So for this frosting it can be a little bit temperamental so make sure that all your ingredients are room temperature and if it does split you can beat it back up and it will come together again so don't worry. So here's what we're gonna do. I have um, room temperature butter nice and soft. I'm going to add that into my stand mixer. Next we're going to add in our mascarpone. You can find this in the fancy cheese part of your supermarket. If you don't have it, you can actually make your own. I have a recipe on my website. It's super easy to make. Add in a bit of salt. Frosting needs salt. And then a little bit of vanilla extract. Vanilla, you know, just brings out the flavours that are already in the cake. Think of it as a seasoning where it just enhances everything else. Now when later on when it's paired with the coffee, oh my gosh, delicious. Okay, crank this up, high speed. Let it get nice and fluffy, just like the way you would making any kind of buttercream frosting. Be careful not to beat them too much because the mascarpone will separate. You just wanna get them nice and smooth. Okay, lovely, and when it looks like this, slowly start to add in your powdered sugar, just like you would any buttercream. Let it mix in there slowly. This is how you get a lovely, light, fluffy buttercream, just adding it a little bit at a time. One tip for this buttercream is make sure your butter is really lovely and soft when you go to whip it, because that'll make all the difference. Once all your sugar is in there, the last thing we're going to do is just pour in a bit of heavy whipping cream. This adds extra fat and creaminess, obviously. And then stop mixing. Okay, so this is our buttercream frosting. It looks great. I'm gonna pop it into the fridge. I heard my oven go, so let's check on our cakes. So here are our cakes and they look beautiful. They're lovely golden brown. And as you can see, these cakes uh, bake quite evenly. Um, and you push them just lightly on top and they're just baked under your finger. Like I said, this is a light airy cake. It only takes around 25 minutes, so be careful not to over bake them. These look fantastic. I'm gonna let these cool down in the tin, let them cool completely, then we can get ready to decorate them. So here we are, my favorite part. We have everything that we need. We have our lovely cooled cakes. I've got my cakes down. I have my frosting ready to go. Here I have some very dark coffee. I like to make it really dark because I want all of that flavor, even the kind of bitterness of it all. Into it, I'm going to add in a little bit of brandy. Whatever you add to your tiramisu, I see that people add in rum. They add, um, you know, Kahlua, like whatever you like to add into your tiramisu. I'm gonna put a drop of brandy in there. You can even put in whiskey. And that is what we're going to use to brush the layers of the cake. So I'm gonna take one cake at a time. I'm going to cut it straight down the middle without any guide. And now I'm realizing that might have been foolish, but I'm, I've gone too deep right now. So here we go, right down the middle. Now I'm gonna take one layer. I'm going to brush it generously with our coffee mixture. And let that soak it up. Reserving enough because we're going to have four layers all together. Okay, lovely. Now on with a dollop of our frosting. Look how creamy and delicious that looks. All the way to the edge. Don't be scabby with the frosting because there's lots of it. Place on another layer. Brush again. And we are going to repeat this process until all our layers are gone. 
soaking the cake in our coffee mixture and then doing a nice generous layer of mascarpone buttercream. So I never claimed to be an expert cake decorator, actually quite the opposite. But when you decorate this cake, I'm gonna build it so simply and we're gonna decorate it so easily that no matter your skill level, it's going to look great. Now we did cut this cake by hand, so make sure you get down there, level it out and make sure that it's even. You know, not all cakes are even when they start out, but you can do a little bit of fancy rejiggering and make it as even as possible. Now with the rest of the frosting, I'm gonna put it on the top and then spread it down all the way to the sides, reserving a little bit to pipe on the end. So now I'm going to do this kind of like a naked cake so you can see those lovely exposed sides and you don't need a ton of frosting. And then with the leftover frosting I have, I put it in a piping bag with a star nozzle. And I'm just going to do some rosettes on top just to elevate the look even more. Often when we see a classic tiramisu, there's dollops of the mascarpone cream on top. So that's what we're gonna do here. And just doing this little extra embellishment at the end will really make it a perfect dessert for your Christmas, holiday, New Year's Eve party. Now for the finishing touch, I have some lovely cocoa powder here. I'm just going to dust that over the top, hitting all of those lovely rosettes. Make sure you use good quality cocoa powder here. I had a picture in my head of how this cake would look, but I have to say, I think it exceeded it. I think it's absolutely gorgeous. It is elegant, it is timeless, and it's just a classic at the same time. A beautiful tiramisu cake, perfect for adults, perfect for New Year's Eve and celebrating the new year. Oh my gosh, this cake definitely took a few extra steps, but I can taste the love and care and effort that went into it. The cake is so soft, a little bit tangy with the mascarpone in there, the coffee soaked cake, the brandy. This is some of my most favorite things all in one dish. A big thank you again to Farmer Direct Foods for sponsoring this video. Stick around because I've got tons more holiday videos for you to check out. And I'll see you back here again with a new video next week. See you then.